I just have to say one last thing before I uh, stop making videos and got to do stuff and then got to get to sleep. Is, uh, <coughs> the, confla the conflation of intelligent design and creationism. Now it's, now it's done. Um, before, when any group of people talk about intelligent design in the mid-90s, um, earlier than that, or see stuff written about it from the 80s, or even like the 70s, when we're going back, they meant, uh, you look at mathematics, the Big Bang, when it was still debated. Um, was a proof for that, was, look, the universe was caused, as opposed to the, what was the universal atheistic uh, opinion before, is that the universe is eternal, which was, was an idea for paganism, it was the Jews and the Christians that said, no, God created the world ex nihilo, from nothing. And the Big Bang supports us. The, some, I think they said a, initially a baseball, and then it was a golf ball, and then it was an atom, and then it was smaller than an atom. And basically, matter came from all time and space. I There was a geology teacher that didn't understand cosmology, because he was saying that just stuff exploded, and that's it's all the particles in the universe, or all the, most of the matter. But no, three-dimensional space and time came out of that. So there was no void for this thing to explode into. It, it created the void. Creation. Uh, and you have <laughs> mathematics and all this. So there's a certain point where I'd say, yeah, I believe in intelligent design, but now it's gotten slammed together with creationists. You say intelligent design, it means creation. It pretty much does now. Um, that's sad. Uh, because people say, oh, well, so you don't believe, you don't believe in creationists, you don't believe in God created the universe. Yes, I do. Absolutely. How he did it is science is telling us and showing us. I think that's beautiful and wonderful. And, uh, People say when you look at the, the, you know, the what the what, what the what you see out in space, the glories that we can observe out in space. Why would you look back at the burning bush? To really, to any religious person, now this is silly because no, that displays the glory of God. The letter of Paul: the heavens and the earth boast the, the glory of God, the magnificence of beauty of the great, you know, uh, even, even evolution shows it's going to mankind being the end result of that, and so many other things, too, and all these things had to occur, I mean, you had the Precambrian, or Cambrian, or whatever it's called, and all these creatures that were pre-dinosaurs, dinosaurs that were pre-dinosaurs, and that getting smashed down from, I think they believe, uh, basalt flow eruptions, which are like huge cracks in the earth spewing forth lava for like a million years and life getting reduced. And even before that, when life was just starting, you had snowball earth and life had to exist in the form of sponges. And then you had this, you know, this era and boom, they got knocked down, and then they came back, and, um, or life crawled back as dinosaurs, and they got crushed. All this leading up to mammals. Our mammalian DNA can trace all the way back to that. That life didn't totally get obliterated, it was still there. Um, and it moving on, uh, until we get to us now here on YouTube now creating 
I think it's beautiful and majestic to look at that and then to see people who are well, so ignorant of Scripture to look and say, well, this is obviously a science textbook. Uh, last time I read Genesis, it didn't say anything about hydrogen bonding with oxygen or anything like this. There's, there's nothing in there about quarks or atoms or neutrons or electrons. Or, no, nothing like this. Um, it was it was about uh, the reason God created the universe. It is good. Man is good. The earth is good. It's not uh, docetist at all. The Marcionites are wrong. The Gnostics are wrong. The earth isn't created by a lesser god. Or you know, it's, oh, we're just entombed in this. You know, which is. And not an idea they got from Christ, it's this idea that they got from the Greeks. Again, the eternal universe or all this other stuff, uh, materialism, and uh, Democritus. Um, the pagans believed, I mean, universe, I don't, all the pagans believed that, that the universe existed before the gods. That maybe they created the earth or something. You know, this is something like this, but uh, that matter is eternal. And we find out, no, it's not. It had a start. Uh, I believe it's going to run out one day. It's just going to go into just nothing. There's the big crunch theory that it's going to reach a point and it's going to come all back. Uh, we're in such a small, people are like, get scared with these ideas, like, what? And it, no, it's not going to, it's like, saying, like, oh my gosh, a mountain might erupt right in the middle of my living room. No, it's going to take a lot longer than that. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, that would be like me worrying about, you know, the, well, look, I mean, trees, I mean, they're, they grow much faster, they, I mean, could spread it up right through here and impale me. No. Um, when people talk about periods of time, it's ridiculous. Like uh, some people don't don't grasp like the blip that we we actually exist in, um, which time to us is different than time to other things. You know, time to us and time to a mayfly, which I think they exist for about 16 hours, <coughs> is different. Um, that's why I think it's funny when people say, no, this, you know, it was a day when God created the earth and it means a day, or, you know, or they'll say, well, no, God meant a day is a thousand years, so that means a day is a thousand years to God. No, that's giving an example. It's, again, it's talking about time, and these periods, these eons or whatever. Um, the sun and the moon, I think... I, I don't, they're not created on the first day, so how do you have a day, since we judge a day by the sun uh, rising and setting for us? In reality, it's the earth rotating. But for us, the sun rises and sets, when it does actually no such thing. Um, but that's our perception. So I think it's a tragedy that Intelligent design has been basically run roughshod over by creationists, and that they say, "Oh, it's tell it well, intelligent design," as, as if it makes it sound more scientific. Um, just talk to somebody who said they they had a bunch of books by Ken Ham. They didn't read them. I said, "Yeah, I don't read them." Uh, or at least, yeah, we'll read it. Read that, you know, foolishness. Check out "Dancing with Unicorns" by Archbishop Lazar. Um, actually, I still gotta send those videos out, but yeah. Um, this creationism is a modern thing, and it's disgusting and repugnant. It makes an idol out of the Bible. I'm a Christian, I believe in the Bible. No, that's backwards. Or that's not even backwards, that's just stupid. No, you believe in Christ. You don't believe in the Bible. The New Testament wasn't assembled until 367. 
or we don't get anything looking like that until 367. Even after that, there were different, I mean, the codices that we find have Shepard Hermes in there, so have, are lacking some books, have more books, have this, have that, you know. Um, and 367 is the first time you can find, and it's a, it's Athanasius, one guy writing to a, a church. Now, Athanasius is a big guy for us in the East, but uh, yeah, this creationism nonsense is, I would say it's anti-Christian. <coughs> I was talking to somebody either yesterday or a few days ago, he mentioned how silly it was that somebody could read the New Testament and then start a church. Many times I've been asked, well, is your church based on the Bible, based on, do you, do you base your church on scripture? Absolutely not. What? Why not? Well, you, you know, then that's a cult. Really? Did the apostles base their church on scripture? No. If you say they did, and meaning, well, they used the well, they they used the Old Testament. Well, no, they based it on Jesus Christ. And even if you want to say, well, you know, they had the they had the what we call, now call the Old Testament. They were using the Septuagint most of the time, uh, which included books that the creation that all creationists will cut out, like Maccabees and Judah. And things like this. Uh, so they're they're not they're rely if they think scripture is so holy, why they why they rip those out? The apostles like them, but the apostles actually reference to in Jude and Second Peter reference books that are non canonical. I mean outside of even the the Orthodox outs. Yeah, I think you'd have to get to the Ethiopians' um, view, and even our view of canon. Um, it wasn't; it was only a reaction, and it was a senate. I think in Jerusalem in the 1633, as a reaction to the Protestant Reformation. Before that, it was just this is what we read in church. Uh, the apostles wrote the New Testament. Testament was written by the church, within the church, for the church. We're pre-scriptural. Did Jesus teach his, base his teachings on what was in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I read the Bible, and now I'm going to go and start a church based on the Bible. Well, no, the church is already talked about in the Bible. It already exists. When did it end? Now you'd have to be some type of Adventist or, well, no, they're called Restorationists, like Joe's Witness and Mormons who claim that there was a great apostasy. Um, then how do you get back to interpreting that? Because it, it, but then they have these, their own false prophets and their own ridiculous stuff, and uh, they're not basing anything on on scripture, they're, I mean, especially not Mormons, but, uh, you know, my question to Jehovah's Witnesses, if the Bible is so clear, why do I have to listen to Watchtower? Their answer would be because it's God's theocratic organization on earth. I would say that that already exists, and that's what Paul and the apostles were talking about. How did they even get their their book, or books, their library, their New Testament? It was us. For 300 years, we were persecuted. Uh, and then, well, the persecution it was never-ending. It's still a battle, because you have to constantly have to contend for the faith, because there's heresy that rises up, there's persecutions, persecutions of, Christian, of Christians in non-Christian countries today, even within Christian countries. 
quote unquote Christian countries. Uh, but there, I mean, there can't really be a, well, I don't know, Byzantine Empire maybe was a Christian uh, empire. Uh, but we, there were plenty of emperors that were against the faith, and we had to stand up to them, um, we being the church. Uh, so, no, that was written by us, for us. And it was held by us. And then foreigners got it, non, non-members of the church. This is, this, this is... This is holy, and every word of it's true, and every word of it proceeds from the word of God. Another problem I have with creationists is they're so literal about creationism. Then when Christ holds up the bread and the wine and says, "This is my body," you know, "This is broken for you. This is the blood of the everlasting covenant." What what does he mean by that? Oh well, you know, he was he was just joking. He didn't. I don't. Maybe that that probably wasn't originally in there. Maybe I mean. Okay, then it all falls apart, your whole thing, right? And they asked uh, this Kevin Ham or Ken Ham or whatever his name is, um, well, can you be a Christian and not believe in creationism? And he says, no, because then you're not believing in all the Bible. This was scripture before you had any of that written down. Symbols. Most people couldn't read written words. They could read symbols. Um, I mean, after Moses gave the Ten Commandments, did, did somebody say, oh, you can't make the Ark of the Covenant. You can't make that bronze serpent. God couldn't have commanded you because the Ten Commandments, you know, that's why it's, that's a contra- I mean, it gets so stig- I mean, it gets so blindly stupid. Or the letter of the Galatians, Christ. I mean, Paul said you, you, Christ was portrayed as crucified. Um, not many people were literate back in the day, in the first century. Uh, our tradition says that Luke was the first iconographer. I suspect even earlier. I think you had him portrayed as crucified. Um, it, it's just blind. I don't get this. Uh, then, I mean, you take the Bible as being totally true, cling to the traditions, to our traditions. I mean, Paul taught in these places for longer. I mean, he said a lot. You'd have to imagine that when he went out evangelizing, everything he said was written down in Scripture, or everything Jesus said was written down in Scripture. Written down in these 27 books. Um, we have... Uh, Paul, going around for at least 14 years, talking to all these people. Oh, but we, we can only listen to what's in these letters. You know, if there's tradition that comes out of here that says, hey, this is what Paul said, did, suspiciously, universally, from Ethiopia to Russia, Mongolia to Ireland and Morocco, um, to, to all the world, Christ is always depicted in the same way. Um, Paul is depicted in the same way, and so is Peter. Peter always has a bushy beard, a lot of hair. Paul's always bald. Christ always has a beard, long hair, similar features, even in Ethiopia. So, oh, they just formed his own cult. They formed whatever they wanted and looked like according to their own culture. Wrong. I mean, Orthodox icons, even from Russia, he's dark skinned. Now, modern iconography from the Protestants, or even like the and the Catholics after 1054, depicted him as, you know, 
a lot of them are very feminine, or he's got blonde hair and blue eyes, as if, uh, I mean, it's, it's all very silly, but if you go to real iconography, I don't know, just all these issues, when you ask a creationist, I mean, they, they, it, they make, it's an idol to them. The Bible is an idol. I mean, never mind, there's even, there's two creation accounts in Genesis, but okay, whatever. Um, do you believe in the Bible? No, I believe in Christ. Do you believe the Bible is literally the Word of God? Absolutely not. Christ is the Word of God. Do you believe the Bible is true? When spoken by the church, yes. True? Yeah, but when truth is a philosophical thing. Is everything in the Bible truth? Well, even when even when Satan's trying to mess with Christ and telling him lies or trying to offer him all this stuff and no. Um, is it inerrant? Well, not in the hands of heretics, only in the hands of the church when the church is speaking it. And that's what the Bible was. It was spoken. That's how people are. Is there, they are all in the New Testament, except Revelation in church. You could read it outside of it, because all you, people were put to death. Where in the East were they put to death for, for a copy of the Bible? It was them copying it. It went from Greek into Latin, Greek into Syriac, Greek into, um, actually, I think, um, some of it was in Syriac before it was in Greek. Syriac being Aramaic, form of Aramaic. Then it went into Ethiopic, Coptic, um, Slavonic, and now modern translations, English, Russian, all the modern languages. So, yeah, creationism is so false, and they're such hypocrites. And any biblical literals, if you go to a church that bases, I mean, ask yourself, how foolish is it to go to a church that they base their, their church is based on the Bible? My church wrote the Bible. My church, at least the New Testament, wrote the New Testament. Paul was talking to churches. They didn't have all of his letters. He wrote to Corinthians, a few letters to them, possibly three. Armenians have a third one. We only put two of them in the canon. Is everything Paul said infallible? Is everything Peter said infallible? Well, Paul rebukes Peter in Acts. Um, and I think he even mentions it in one of his letters. Uh, I think it is Corinthians. But, uh, it, I mean, this is utter foolishness. I mean, the Bible is literally true. Uh, li literally, well, literally, if you're talking about, is it literature? Yes, it exists as literature. Um, when Paul rejects Christ three times, is that, that's the word of God? Him denying Christ? I mean, that we're, says in the Bible that that's of the Antichrist. Paul calls, <laughs> Christ calls Peter Satan at one point. <laughs> I don't know. I wish the, uh, I mean, I wish I could say, you know, I, I believe in intelligence science because I believe in Big Bang, and mathematics, all this. To me, this just bears witness. It's not the reason why I profess a belief in God, but it's, I mean, it, I don't think it bashes it all, and it very inspiring and beautiful, all of, all of, all of creation, and I think mathematics are the fingerprints of God, it's order and stuff like that, I realize mathematics is just a description of how things work, but um, metaphysics is very cool. Gracious, throw this all out the window because they need to make an idol out of the Bible. I got one sitting over there. It's not an idol. This is not an idol either. If you 
make either of those idols, either of these forms of scripture idols, no. You, you, you're now not a Christian. If you actually, I mean, I realize many Christians say they believe in the Bible, but if you ever actually hold that belief, you believe in the Bible like the creationists do, I would say you're an idol worshiper, and you, you no, then because you're supposed to believe in Christ, not the book that the church put together, and then you, your guys, your boys, just 500 years shortly ago, uh, ripped out a lot of the Old Testament and said, we're going to base our church on this. 1,500 years after the fact. That does not make sense at all. Um, all right, that's all, that's all I got to say. Peace to you. May God save Serbian Syria. This has been useful to hear. Please continue praying for my family. Um, I will keep all of you in my prayers. Um, and check out Palestinian Girl. I think she's awesome. Uh, take it easy. Good night. I think that's beautiful and wonderful. And uh, people say when you look at the, the you know, the what the, what, what the, what you see out in space, the glories that we can observe out in space, why would you look back at the burning bush? To, to any religious person, oh, this is silly because, no, that displays the glory of God. The letter of Paul, the heavens and the earth boast the, the glory of God, the magnificence of it, the beauty of it, the you know. Uh, I just have to say one last thing before I uh, stop making videos and got to do stuff and then got to get to sleep. Is uh, <coughs> the confl the conflation of intelligent design and creationism? Now it's now it's done. Um, before when any group of people talk about intelligent design in the mid '90s. Uh, earlier than that. Or see stuff written about it from the 80s or even like the 70s when we're going back. They meant uh, you look at mathematics. The Big Bang, when it was still debated, um, was a proof for that. Was Look, the universe was caused as opposed to the, what was the universal atheistic uh, opinion before, is that the universe is eternal, which was, was an idea for paganism. It was the Jews and the Christians that said, no, God created the world ex nihilo, from nothing. And the Big Bang supports this, the, some, I think they said uh, initially a baseball, and then it was a golf ball, and then it was atom and it was smaller than atom and basically matter came from all time and space I there was a geology teacher that didn't understand cosmology because he was saying that just stuff exploded and that's it's all the particles in the universe or all like most of the matter but no three-dimensional space and time came out of that so there was no void for this thing to explode into it, it created the void, creation. Uh, and you have <laughs> mathematics and all this. So there's a certain point where I'd say, yeah, I believe in intelligent design, but now it's gotten slammed together with creationists. You say intelligent design, it means creation. It pretty much does now. Um, that's sad. Uh, People say, "Oh well, so you don't believe you don't believe in creation, so you don't believe in God created the universe." Yes, I do, absolutely. How he did it is science is telling us and showing.